Venerable religious, dear parishioners, two Sundays ago, we had what I called Compassion Sunday. We see our Lord taking compassion on the widow whose only son had died, and he, out of compassion, raised her son from the dead. And St. Paul was very much teaching us about compassion when he taught us to bear one another's burdens. That's the practice of charity, to see and recognize other people's burdens and to do something to alleviate that. And by way of reminder, compassion means to suffer with somebody. We take some of their pain to the extent we can, their, their, their suffering, and we, we bear it along with them. And so that was definitely Compassion Sunday. As a matter of fact, our Lord even used that word compassion. That time when people were following him for, I believe it was three days, and Jesus says, I have compassion on the multitude. They have been following me and they are, they need something to eat. And it was one of those two opportunities when our Lord changed, you know, uh, I think it was in this case that uh, five loaves and the two t- fishes into enough food to feed thousands upon thousands of people. So our Lord himself used that word compassion. And I bring this up because Our Lord wants us to have compassion on his mother. And that's what I wish to speak to you about. Our mother of sorrows. As you can see here and before the pulpit, we have, instead of the usual Fatima statue, we have the the picture of the sorrowful mother. This... Uh, this picture, it's the original, is in Quito, Ecuador. And it's very, very dramatic because it shows the seven swords. I mean, most, mo- most images of the Sorrowful Mother show the seven swords. They show the tears in Our Lady's eyes. They show her with the nails that were taken out of Jesus' hands and feet. Um, and we, we strive through devotion to have compassion in Our Lady on her sufferings. Yes, it is absolutely true that Jesus is no longer suffering, that Mary is no longer suffering. They were, they went to heaven 2,000 years ago. They've been reigning in glory. So why does the church Put the crucifix before our eyes. The, you know, pictures, statues of our Lord's passion, his scourging. Why does the church put before our eyes the sorrowful mother as though it was happening now? And I think the answer is pretty, pretty clear and obvious to all of us that even though they are not suffering now, they absolutely suffered all of that when on earth. And we should never forget that. We should never, ever forget that. And so it is not wrong to speak of, I mean, that's the way it's represented to us, as though Jesus and Mary were suffering now. Because that is such a powerful thing to help us to overcome sin in our own lives out of love for our Lord, out of love for Our Lady, seeing the price that they paid for our sins, we then say, I can't keep adding to their sufferings. And yes, every sin ever committed adds added to the sufferings of our Lord and our Blessed Mother. If they 
if, if humanity had sinned less, they would have suffered less. It's entirely accurate to say that. So let us meditate regularly on the sufferings of Jesus and Mary. And why is this so important besides the fact that it helps us to overcome sin? This is what brings about true revival. This is what transforms our lives. This is how we change for the better. And we always grow in our love of our Lord and our Lady when we see what they suffered for us. You know, sometimes you see posted the picture of a, of a, of a soldier who was wounded in battle. And some of these are horrific injuries. Maybe they were burned, you know, third degree burns over most of their body. Some of their appendages were even burned off. They're, terribly disfigured or they lost an arm or a leg and 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 you and you realize you know they they suffered that for for me because they suffered it for our country and any time we see people who have paid such a price we compassionate them we can't literally take their pain away, but they feel supported by the respect and honor and love that we give to them. That reminds me about the flag. Isn't it disheartening, to say the least, to see people taking the opportunity to disrespect the flag? That Remember, the flag represents the country, so to dishonor the flag is to dishonor the country. To dishonor the flag is to dishonor everyone who suffered and died under that flag. And every soldier has done that. I mean, it's, it's, it's disgusting. It's spitting on what it represents. Very powerful saying. It says, those who dishonor the flag have never been handed a folded one. What does that mean? Those that receive a folded flag for somebody who died in battle or who was a veteran, and it's one of the greatest honors It's done even after a Catholic burial, after the liturgical part is over, they're handed a flag. And it's very moving because love of country is indeed a virtue that we should all have and practice. So going back to our Lord and our Blessed Mother, let us meditate on on them. This is how we grow in our compassion to meditate on those seven sorrows of Our Lady, the, the prophecy of Simeon, the flight into Egypt, the loss of, the three days loss of Jesus. That not that what could be called the parent's ultimate nightmare? All of a sudden you don't know where your child is. And as perfect as our Blessed Mother was, and even St. Joseph, relative to his holiness, they were in no way at fault for the three days' loss of Jesus in the in Jerusalem. But can you imagine, well, ask a parent that has lost a child, even for a small amount of time, the nightmare they go through. They would understand some of that sorrow that... Our Lady and St. Joseph went through. And then meeting Jesus on the way to Calvary, you know, seeing him die in torture and agony on the cross and then taking him down from the cross and then the burial of Jesus. Those are the seven sorrows of Our Lady. You know, meditate on them. And also pray for the grace to understand them better. It's a grace you know, so that we do not, after viewing the the sufferings of our Lord and our Lady, you know, walk away unchanged. We pray that we not fall into hardness of heart where it doesn't move us, it doesn't affect us, 
It should affect us. And again, this is true spiritual revival. This will make us holier. So I bring all this up particularly today because yesterday was the Feast of the Sorrowful Mother. We dedicate this whole month to her. So a great devotion for us to think about and to grow in. And I'll leave you with this. A wonderful statement, I think, that's, that sums up so well who our Blessed Mother is. And it goes like this. It says, God made Mary immaculate, but it is our sins that made her sorrowful. Let's love this mother who did all of that because she loved God so much and loves us more than we could ever know. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.